I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, let's hear it. Three hundred thousand dollars in student loans and nervous about the future. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, let's play it. Courtney's in Atlanta. Hi, Courtney. Welcome Hi, to the Courtney. Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call today. Sure. What's up? Okay, so I have fallen into the student loan conundrum. I All of my debt is in student loans. Um, I'm 30 years old. I have about 300000 in student loans. And 30 years old with more than a quarter million dollars in student loan. I hope he asks who's the doctor, lawyer, right? 30 years old. And I am engaged, have been for the past three years because we are scared to get married. We just because of the debt, we are nervous to buy a home. We are currently renting and we want to get free. We are completely new to you and your show and your plan. Um, so we just want to go. I, I understand why you're scared with 300,000. Now, just so you know, this is playing at 1.25 speed. I wonder who's scared. Is she scared or is her fiance? I think, I think she's the one who has the debt, I think. Um, or is her fiance scared? I want to know who's more scared thousand dollars in student loan debt why does getting why does that affect getting married mm -hmm. um it doesn't i guess well, it did it you told me you've been waiting three freaking years all right um so i guess we neither one of us just want to go to the courthouse and get married but we oh, you want to be able to pay for something nicer is what you're saying right but are you a doctor I mean, or a lawyer have... there we go there we go let's hear it um i'm actually a pharmacist what are you earning a hundred and a half um, actually, it's more like 122, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Gross. Gross. Does yeah. that feel low? It's a little, pharmacy? it's a little uh, low, but you're starting. You're just, you okay. just got out. So, um, Correct. how long yeah. you been out of school? Um, for the past three years. Okay. All right. What's his situation? I got an undergrad degree before I actually went into school. Well, at least they're being responsible. They're having the discussion about the debt before they get married. Right. I did a video just, um, not too long ago on a woman who uh, is pregnant and baby's due in about 12 weeks, no father, and uh, it doesn't seem like the entire situation was very planned out and she has an eviction uh, being written up, I think it was about a week or so ago. So at least this couple, well, the debt just seems really high. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe $300,000 for a pharmacy degree. I don't know. See, when I was married, we made in we made about a hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, maybe even possibly a little bit more, and it didn't seem like that much money. And even with my student loan at the time it was in the eighties, it it was no three hundred thousand. Yeah. What does he make? Um, he makes uh sixty, mm -hmm. and then he also gets uh bonuses. Um, what, what is, does he have not. a bunch of debt too? He, has, he actually has no debt, um, cool. and um, he has very minimal like, credit history, mm -hmm. so we actually did seek out you know, mortgage pre-approval, mm -hmm. and we got it, but it was basically... Yeah, you don't, you don't, need, you don't need to buy a house. It's not hard to get a, uh, a pre-approval for a mortgage. I, I don't think it really is. So let me tell you, right. let me tell you a story. That's where we're at. Let me tell you a story. My husband and I had 280000 of student loans, a little less than you, but if you add our credit cards in, we are, you know... Call it 300. Yeah, no credit card for us. <laughs> My point is, your income is a lot better than ours was back then. It, it's better. Let's see, this video is um, four months ago. It's better if it's tightly managed. Okay? Um, as they say, it's, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. But so far, at least they're being responsible. They have obviously are having the discussion. So that that's a good thing. At least uh -huh. to start. And for you guys, it doesn't matter, like Dave said, Getting married is not the issue. Matter of fact, go ahead and get married. Work on this thing together and go through. <sighs> so, so, sometimes I can't tell what Dave wants. Does he want people to get together heavily in debt or does he not want them to get together heavily in debt? Sometimes I can't tell. Through it together. And you're just going to have to walk through these steps and commit to the fact that we've got this debt here for a couple of years. We're living on nothing to get this paid off. Luckily, you guys got a good shovel, good shovel. I'm sorry. You've got a good income and that's it. It's just the student loans, right? And Courtney, now, Courtney, you feel, you feel stuck. I don't think it's as easy to pay off as um, they're making it sound. I really don't. If I think about when I was married, 
Okay, I didn't make 60,000 a year at the time. It was probably closer to the 50,000. Okay, um, I, I, I don't, I never believe it's as easy and as simple as sometimes um, the Ramsey Show makes it sound. If it were so easy, and I've said it before, we would not have 30-year mortgages on $300,000 homes, okay? People who make in their income, okay, I think he makes 60, she makes around 120, maybe she'll get a raise in the future, okay? How many of those people go out and get mortgages for $300,000 homes and say, hey, we'll have this paid off in two years? Again, it doesn't matter where the dollar is going as far as the title of the dollar. It's the dollar period. So it doesn't matter to me if this is a $300,000 student loan or if it's $300,000 house. Could I knock out a $300,000 house in two years? It, it, it makes it makes no difference. And I think this is part of when people go, how come student loans last so long? Because it's never as easy to knock out the bill as fast as you would like. It, it just isn't. Now, some people, granted, can do it. Some people really, really can. All right? Not saying everybody can, but I think they're more, almost more the outliers, unfortunately, that are able to just take it and knock it out. But if $300,000 bills were so easy, then people in $300,000 homes shouldn't need a mortgage for more than just a couple of years. Don't you? I really do. And you yeah. feel a little bit ashamed to marry him. And, 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 hand, and hand him 300k <laughs> I would really like to know who's more afraid of the marriage I believe it would be the guy who's more afraid to get married because that, that's a heck of a debt to take on I will link at the end okay I will link at the end of this video the um, attorney Excuse me. It was it was a 30 year old who talks about why he would not marry somebody ever again with a massive student loan debt. This would be considered massive. He was an attorney, 30 years old. And as he said, he put in his words, it was a bloodbath getting through it. And he was not married, no kids. OK, he was able to put all the card pieces where he needed them to go. But he described it as an absolute bloodbath. And when he had the opportunity more than once, to get married, he turned both of them down saying, I'm not walking that path again. It's never as easy as it seems. I'll try to link that video at the end. If you listen sometimes, you know, um, to the Ramsey show, it, it makes debt just seem almost like it's just a whisper of a kiss to get rid of. Yeah. Like you're going, this is pretty serious dowry here. Yeah. Um, that's an old word. But yeah, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's um, so it is messing up not getting married, but it's messing up your view of yourself and your relationships. Is that, well, and it's is, also difficult to budget because, you know, we want to have one bank account. Um, you don't need to have one bank account until to, you're married. Correct, yes. Let me project a future for you that you haven't seen. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's run some numbers for a second, okay? Go okay. get married this weekend. Uh, okay, and, and, and here's what I suspect is going to happen, all right? Um, he's going to project what their future dollars are. Okay, and the projection will be she'll be at the top of her field, top of the career in just a few years. She'll be bringing all this money and this debt will be gone in two years. Um, I don't I know I'm, I'm debt free. I don't project like that. I don't think it's wise to project like that, because what happens if the future doesn't deliver on that? I mean, you can try. But to put it in stone and say, yep, this is, this is how much money I'm going to make by such and such date. I, I, I don't, I did not become debt free. I can honestly tell you because I thought into the future how much more money I would make. I actually became debt free by going, what would happen if I didn't make additional money in the future? What would happen if my teaching job never gave me another pay raise? What ha would happen if I had to cut down, uh, due to medical reasons, my income by half? That is how I became debt free and it required me to drop everything. That's how I became debt free. And I still had a student loan at the time because I just became debt free September 2023. So just, I've only been debt free totally debt free like eight weeks ago but I was on that path okay and I became debt free nine months earlier than expected 
All right, I wasn't expecting to become totally debt free till summer 2024. I mean, 110% completely done, yada yada. Okay, I, it, it got bumped up by nine months. So I became debt free nine months early, but I was already on that track and I was solidly on it. But I didn't get there because I looked at the future and said, well, I expect to get another thousand dollar teaching pay raise within this time, and then I expect my part time job to give me this. That's not how I did it. I took everything and I said, what would happen if I lost it? What would it take for me to be able to keep it? How little would I have to have? How little would I have to own? And that's how I, you know, purchased a very small condo versus a bigger condo. Purchased half of what I could afford. It's how I trimmed down all my budget. And I haven't had cable since I've been divorced, which was over 10 years. I think cable is a huge waste of money for the most part. <laughs> no, just, just, just ride, ride with me on my little trip here, okay? Just okay. for a second. It sounds absurd, but you've been dating for three years. You've been engaged forever. Um, we'll celebrate in other ways later. Uh, now, if I calculated correctly, you make 122, he makes 60. That's 182. He has no debt. We have now one right. house to support, one set of rent, one set of uh, heat and air, one set of electricity, one set of water, one set of things in the refrigerator. You with me? Right. So yep. your living costs go down approximately in half. The living costs go down for her. For him, hypothetically, it's going to go way up. Not hypothetically. His cost is going up. He's marrying into a $300,000 debt. He's marrying into a, we need to make sure we pay at least $3,000 a month towards the student loan. Or we're going to incur interest on interest. Her costs go down. His shoot up. I also have a car payment. Oh, what, do you, own, what do you owe on your car? 20. Okay, we'll, 20, put, we'll put that in the story too. Okay, now, okay. now, okay. So you make 122, he makes 60, and he has bonuses on top of that. What do you think he'll really make in the coming? 20? Okay, see, th th this is the thing. I don't count bonuses. I don't count them. I don't. If it isn't in my base pay, I became debt free because I never counted those things. I never relied on those things. Not a penny of it. And um, I know someone who literally calculates her bonus as part of her cost of living, as part of her housing, as part of her transportation. And the problem, <coughs> excuse me, the problem with that is she actually lives her life based on that dollar figure. And it's fooled her into thinking she has more money than she really has. Because there have been times when the bonuses haven't come in, it's been a panic. Well, if you're not relying on your bonuses, okay, and you're just looking at what you make right now, what scenario with what you make right now could you, what, what situation financially would you sit in right now based on what you make, assuming you did not make any more in the future? That's where I project. Anything else is just, you know, um, uh, cherry what is it? Whipped cream and cherries on the cake. Anything else. So that that's where Dave and I definitely are on different wavelengths. I don't go, okay, what would happen? Okay, I, I don't do this. I have a part-time job, and it's a pretty stable part-time job because it's right at my school. I don't ever go, well, now let's see. If I do my part-time job, and I can bring in an extra, you know, $400 a month, and I do that for so long, this is, what I'll, this is what I'll have. I don't allow myself to do that because what happens if I have to leave the part-time job? Okay? I mean, it is a part-time job. It's a little side gig. All right? What happens if I have to leave it? I don't allow, I don't factor the part-time job into my budget. I don't factor bonuses, um, side gigs, future pay raise. I've never factored that into my budget in over 10 years. And I swear it's how I became debt free. Because if I had factored those things into my budget, I would have gone, okay, let's see. When I got divorced 10 years ago, I was at 50,000. I could go, okay, let's just assume now in the future, I'm going to be at, you know, 58, 59, 60,000. I'm going to pace my financial spending on that. I never did that. I've always looked at it as just, this is what I make. And anything, you know, Extra is just great. Well, it's including his bonuses. Um, uh, 
She can't factor the bonuses. They are bonuses. They are not base pay. Probably maybe 170 with, the, I mean, maybe 70 with a bonus. Okay. Th this is the problem, though. You, you don't actually know. You're pulling straws. You don't actually know. It's a bonus. It can be anything. You, you know, what is it? What What is it? You, you shouldn't rely on it until it's actually in your hand. Okay. You should not rely on bonuses until it's in your hand. It is much safer to financially plan without in without incorporating bonuses and all of that stuff. Because she she the, the the she's just making up the numbers. She's just making up numbers. And for me to become debt free, I could not afford to make up numbers. I had to work with what was actually here today. Those numbers can be adjusted as new numbers come in down the future, all right? Those numbers can be adjusted, but I'm sure as heck not gonna just take it and adjust it on my own and do some, you know, hocus pocus, you know, hopefully magic trick, and I hope I hit that, um, you know, number in the future. I, I don't I don't operate that way. Okay, and, and I know this about you, you may not, but you can pick up pharmacy duty in the ER at the local hospital on the weekends, and you can make another 25 or 30 if you put in a whole bunch more hours. He, does, he doesn't know that. Is she making that money right now? This is this is probably the biggest area I disagree with with Ramsey because there are lots of areas I definitely agree with him on, but I, but I think this area is the biggest one that I definitely disagree with. These are all hypotheticals. We don't know that. What happens? Something happens if she can't pick up those extra hours for whatever reason, personal emergency, family emergency, whatever. I could not become debt free if I had based my dollars on projection. And I mean, th that that's that's just me. Maybe, maybe other people can. So then you're putting in as a temporary right. measure, okay? And so now I'm at 155 and 70. So I All based on numbers that are what? Hypotheticals. Nothing is real. I think I'm doing two and a quarter now. Anybody with me here? I got three hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, and I'm going to take my two and a quarter, and I'm going to live on fifty. At least okay, but the the dollar amount that this is all being based on it hasn't actually occurred yet. Excuse me, one seventy five minus taxes to put on the three hundred. You're debt free in two years. Everybody who owns a three hundred thousand dollar house should have it paid off in two years from this, from from these figures. Why do we have 30-year mortgages? What what happens that creates us to have to have 30-year mortgages? Why do we even need 15-year mortgages? Just by picking up extra hours. Picking up extra hours, living together, married, and, mm -hmm. and spending no money. You're not eating out. You're not going on vacation, and you're sure as crud not buying a house. We might be selling your car right. to get a cheaper car. But we, the goal here is to get free because otherwise we're stuck. We want to get free so we can buy a house and live a great life together and build wealth. And have kids. And have kids mm -hmm. and be generous. But right now, you can't see that because you've got Mount Everest stuck between you and Hope. She, they have a house in front of them. That's what they have. They have a house in front of them. And when they go get their house, are they going to pay it off in two years? If you can pay off a student loan in two years, why can't you pay off a house in two years? What's the difference? It's all the same dollars. Right. And I just took Mount Everest apart with a pickaxe in two years. But using numbers that are not confirmed. Like I said, this this is this is probably the really the only area I really disagree. Whereas if she used her real dollars that she actually makes, they then they can project, okay, this is what we know we can do. These are the deadlines we know we can meet. Anything extra that we can throw towards it. We're going to do that. When I um, paid off this condo and, you know, I, I did get a little help, you know, with, with with a significant down payment with my inheritance. All right. But it, again, and I've said it before, I still had to take out about a fifty thousand dollar mortgage, which is a little under fifty thousand. So um, it wasn't like, you know, I could just take my inheritance, throw it all you know, into the um, condo and say, okay, I'm all done. All right. Um, but it did pay for a significant portion. It paid for the remodel and all of that. But I still 
in determining that I wanted to pay it off. This is actually what happened, okay? Um, I took out a 15-year mortgage and I actually had projected to pay it off in seven years, okay? And I projected it based on what I made at that time, never accounting for future money. So I knew seven years is what realistically I could pay it off in. Then the pandemic hit and we got the stimulus money. Then I picked up a part-time job. That money came in, okay? All this stuff started rolling in. All of that extra money that I received then just simply got shoved towards the condo and I was able to pay it off in three years. That to me is a much better and re that to me is a more realistic budget plan than me hy is it hypothesizing. I hope that's the correct word. Then me hypothesizing. Well, you know, um, if I make this and I think I can get this in the future, because what happens if I don't get it? Then I'm going to be disappointed. What what happens if this goal can't be me? Can't I mean can't can't be met? What happens? I did that. Right. But I'm telling you, you you're gonna you, you're you're it's gonna be really hard two years. Because all the little luxuries yeah. you're accustomed to, none ya, none them. And, that, and that's why I'm going to attach at the end the 30-year-old attorney, okay? The 30-year-old attorney who said after he paid off his $200,000 and it was a bloodbath and everything he had to do to get that paid off, he said he would never go through it again. Get nothing. Don't you dare right. see the inside of a restaurant unless you're working there. Yeah, so tuna fish um, I did have a and day old uh, bread. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Um, so I guess the biggest thing was I did hear several several of your advices to other people just being like, don't rely on public service loan forgiveness. Do it yourself. Just, I just got you out of debt in two years. Why would you even bring that up? Right. He, he got them out of debt in two years on paper. On paper. And everything on paper always works out. Well, because I guess my fiance sees it as a way out. It's not, not a way out. It's like a 10 year lie. You know what percentage of. Because his fiance has a point. Okay. His fiance has a point. On paper, sure. On paper, anybody can get out of debt at pretty much whatever time frame they want. All right. On paper. It's when you apply real life to it, it's when you apply real life <coughs> and it changes things. Why don't people with $300,000 mortgages get out of debt in two years? Why do we have $1.75 trillion in student loans? If I'm correct, half of those student loans are below the $50,000 mark. Okay? If I, if I remember my stats correctly, all right, the 1.75 current, it's adjusting my stool here, Okay, um, the 1.75 current student loan bill. Okay, I believe more than half of it is actually under fifty thousand. Why are people carrying these bills? Why are people carrying fifty thousand dollar student loan bills they can't pay off when three hundred thousand dollar bills should be paid off in two years? And again, people say, well, but they have a bigger shovel. Uh, I hate to like like I said earlier, I hate to break it. I, I've been in the basically the same income bracket they were in. Okay, I, I didn't make 60 at the time. I made uh, close to 50 at the time 10 years ago. All right. And then my spouse made gross, you know, over 100. So 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 we really aren't we're, we're probably not $20,000 difference when I was married. Probably not not a $20,000 difference from what this couple makes here. Let me tell you something. $300,000 student loan to pay off. Uh uh. Didn't happen didn't happen now part of it I will admit is we weren't the best financially planning all right it's not what you make it's what you keep you know so I will throw that into the hat but again this she's out of debt based on paperwork not based on the actual applied life situations public loans Hi. public service loans forgiveness actually get forgiven less than two percent 98% get screwed by this plan. Right. Think about the way you're feeling right now. Do you want to feel that for the next 10 years? Waiting well, on? Well, the, the, but the, here, here's the thing. When they apply real life to paying off this $300,000 debt, they may experience it anyways. At least if you go with a public service loan forgiveness, you have a pension when you're done. A lot of people forget that. They don't talk about that. 
Yeah, put 10 years into the federal government, put 10 years to the state government, not only is your $300,000, not only do you get to pay income-based, okay, income-based, and the, and by the way, if you marry, um, you don't want, you, you, don't, you do not want to file your taxes together. You need to file uh, married but filing separately. Otherwise, what can happen is his taxes um, will affect her income-based payment, and you want to actually show as little income as possible, so you pay as little as possible. So you want to make sure you file married but filing separately, okay, when you're trying to do income-based. But a lot of people don't talk about the fact that, you know, 10 years, Lots of people are paying are paying 10 years on their, lots of people are going on to their student loans 20, 30 years. All right, 20, 30 years. Uh, PSLF or not, public service loan forgiveness or not. So when people say, you know, oh, gee, you want to be on that for 10 years? We can have you off in two years. On paper, you can. But don't forget, PSLF, you work for the federal government, state government. You also walk away with a pension. So not only do you not have to pay the three thousand dollar a month bill that they're gonna have to pay all right they could probably that'll probably get not that that'll get knocked down to her income because it's income based she'll pay pennies on the dollar plus she'll be earning towards a federal or a state pension federal state city pension nobody ever talks about that I'm waiting so on something that likely stressed. won't happen. Yeah, the reason he wants you to plug into that, he doesn't think there's another way. But you guys make a lot of money together. You sure do. No, it's not as much money as you think. My ex and I made that. Now, could we have better spent it? Absolutely. Absolutely, we could have better organized and managed it. Okay? And as soon as this bill is paid off, they want to buy a house. Are they going to pay that house off in two years? Because if the answer is no to paying that house off in two, three years, then this isn't any different than, buy, than paying off a house. Yeah. And you can make even more and spend none of it and throw it all at the student loans and kill that sucker. Mm -hmm. 150 a year for two years out of two and a quarter and you're free. Mm -hmm. You're going to be done in two years. It took my husband and I seven and a half. Put that because in real life, that's what you and your husband had to do to the lovely Jada. That's real life. Okay. And I'm sure if Jada and her husband had put it on paper, they'd been out of debt in two years also. Because remember, she said that her debt was about 280, so respectively 300. So how come Jada and her husband couldn't pay it off in two and a half years? Now, maybe they made less. I don't know. But either way, this is all two and a half years based on paper. I would not be debt free today if I had based all my stuff on paper. I had to look instead at what I really, really made and drop, drop, drop my bills down as far as I could get them. And I continue to keep them dropped. I actually, um, I put about 30 to 35% of my income now goes into retirement. Ever since I became debt free. That's actually my January 2024 present to myself. Actually, I've already got, I've already started doing it, but my official start day is January 1st, even though it's already started. <laughs> It, I literally started putting 30, 35% away, I think within two weeks of becoming debt free. It was like, boom, let's just get it started. Plus, of course, the emergency savings account. Okay, you need a couple months savings. I'd like to build up a little bit more than a couple months, but for right now, you know, I got about two months. I'm, I'm cool with that right now. That in perspective. Okay. And we rented the whole time, so and you let babies. that make you, and we had, well, at and this was years ago, and what was rent at the time, all right, I, I don't think, I think, I think she, that was probably a while ago that they rented, okay, because a one-bedroom apartment now, 1800 a month in Tampa, 1800 1700 if you're lucky. That was after the fact. I know. But for you, two one and after half seven years? years, was it? Yeah, it was after. Okay, and, and again, this show was four months ago. This episode aired four months ago this year. After the seven oh, you years. Are you having kids five for seven? We waited. Okay. We rented for. Look, here's the stats. We rented for ten years, and waited for mm -hmm. eleven years to have kids. Wow. Yep. Because wow. it was doing to her what it, like, what you thought it was doing yes. to you before this phone call. Right. Now right. I might be off by a year. Mm -hmm. Whoop whoopee. And that's fine. Three years. Whoopee. Mm -hmm. or, I might. Or maybe five years. When the numbers actually show themselves, be off by another year. You might be on, might do it in a year and a half because mm -hmm. you guys just go That's bananas, right. and your husband goes, "Hey, game on! I'm working twenty four seven. We're getting done. Get married this weekend and kill this debt, girl. Do it." <laughs> See, I, I I say no. 
and like I said, I will link that video at the end about the attorney who's like, he's, he's like, he, he wouldn't marry a woman with $200,000 in debt, much less 300. Well, I appreciate your advice. I, I feel like she's not going to do it. <laughs> she's no, not going to do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> she may do it, but the person she's marrying may not. I'd really like to be a fly on the wall in his brain. <laughs> okay. I mean, he may love this woman a lot, but the fact that they have been engaged for three years during this. Okay. I mean, it says good things about her character though. Okay. It says very good things about her character and that she is very aware of the debt. She's aware of the responsibilities, yada, yada. But I would like to be a fly on the wall in his brain. Everybody in America just heard that. You are not. <laughs> Thank you for your advice. Thank you for calling Courtney. <laughs> All right. That's the end of that. I'm going to go ahead and expand the screen. Sometimes I just have a hard time finding my screen corner. All right. This really is probably the only area where I can say I, I won't say I vehemently, that's awfully strong, where I just, I don't agree with the way Dave projects their future uh, financial, uh, what is it, success. Okay. Um, I, I, I really, really believe in looking at what you have keep that same budget what would it be if it never went up where would you be and anything extra that you get consider that a gift and i can tell you even today um as soon as i became debt free and like i said i was debt free about eight eight nine months earlier than i planned i planned to be 110 percent debt free um uh about may about may 2024 and um I've just, you know, I've used my part-time job and everything that could possibly come my way, but I've never factored that into my budget. And as such, I think it really, really helped that when I did become debt-free earlier, I, I've been able to avoid lifestyle creep. And for those who may not be familiar with what lifestyle creep, it just simply means the more you earn, the more your spending tends to go up. I've been in reverse. The more I earn, my spending has dropped stay or stayed the same and I can tell you that today even with putting you know um, 30 35 percent a month into my retirement I live today on what I actually took home per paycheck about I'd say about eight I won't say quite ten years ago I, I, I take home a little bit more than that but I would say say about about eight years ago I live today on that and it is also how I budgeted to get out of debt. So I just simply want to share, you know, how I do it. You know, for somebody else, it may be better better to do it the Dave Ramsey way. They they may feel that you know that gives more hope, whatnot. Um, I think my for me, my way gave me hope, um, and it kept me incredibly grounded. And anything that came along the way, any pay raise, any bonus, any unfound money. <laughs> Okay, five dollars while well, taking a walk or whatever. Okay, that that was all just extra, and I put that extra towards the budget. I mean, toward towards my debts, loans, whatnot. Um, I should say mortgage, my mortgage loan. But I I don't feel comfortable planning the future on money that has not yet been made. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you will consider subscribing and you have a great day. Bye.